Hello, fifth grade, and welcome to our Earth Day book talk. I'm Miss Schaefer, and I will be presenting three books that have to do with kids who want to save their part of the world and their environment. Will they succeed? Who knows? Our first book is Fuzzy Mud by Louis Sackar. This book takes place in Heathcliff, Pennsylvania. Tamaya Dilwadi, who is in fifth grade, and her friend Marshall Walsh both go to a private school. They, their private school stands for ideals that they have on their coat of arms on their uniform. These ideals are inscribed truth and valor. Tamiya always does her best to live up to these ideals, but as she's been getting older, she realizes that being good is not cool anymore. This puts a strain on her relationship with her best friend, Marshall Walsh, who is two years older than her. One day, Marshall decides that they're going to take the shortcut home through the woods, which are completely off limits. Tamaya does not want to break the rules. She's so scared of it. Little does she know that Marshall has been threatened by a much older and much meaner kid named Chad Hillegas who has just moved into town. Marshall wants to avoid a fight with Chad, so they cut through the woods. As they're walking through the woods, it gets scarier and scarier for Tamiya. She keeps asking Marshall what they're doing there when suddenly Chad appears and he starts beating Marshall up. Tamiya does her best and tries to protect her friend Marshall and slams a fistful of mud into Chad's face. They get away. But later, Tamiya notices a horrifying red rash on her hand. The next day at school, Chad is reported missing, and students are asked where he could be. Tamiya wants to do the right thing, but she's also afraid of getting in trouble. She knows that Chad is still out there somewhere in the woods with some mysterious fuzzy mud coated on his face. Our next book is Saving Wonder by Mary Knight. This book takes place in the Appalachian Mountains in Wonder Gap, Kentucky. It's a beautiful location. Now, in this book, we have seventh grader Curly Hines, who has lived in the mountains his entire life. However, he's lost almost his entire family to coal mining accidents. He lives with his papa, who is much older, his grandfather, and his papa gives him a word to learn every week so that he can become good with words and con a convincing arguer. Curly doesn't understand what this is all for until some of the events in the book unfold. Curly's best friend is Jules Cavanaugh, also a seventh grader. They grew up together. They played in the same tree, which they called Old Charlie after her horse and they just enjoyed the view of Red Hawk Mountain, which was right outside Curly's window. One day, a bad boy moves to town. His name is JD, and he's the new coal boss's son. Jules is really interested in JD right away, but at this point, Curly is feeling a little bit more interested in Jules as a girlfriend. He doesn't know how to feel. He wants to let her be able to hang out with JD, and he also doesn't want to hate JD. So Curly tends to pull out his harmonica and play a lonesome song to make himself feel better in these situations. But it's not all about Curly. One day, Curly realizes that the new coal boss is fixing to take off the top of the mountain in Wonder Gap. The mountain that he's looked at his whole life. He's lost everything else, his whole family, his mom, his dad, his little brother, and now maybe even jewels to the coal boss's son. He decides he has to do something, even if it means getting thrown out of town. Will Curly be all alone in the fight? 
will he ever get his life back to the way it was before JD came to town with his father intent on taking off the top of the mountain? You'll have to read Saving Wonder to know. Our last book is Hoot by Carl Hyacin. This book is set in central Florida. Our main character, Roy Eberhardt, has just moved there from Montana. Roy has been moving around his entire life. He spends a couple years here, a couple years there, because his father works for the government in some mysterious law enforcement job and is always getting promoted and moved around the country. Roy doesn't seem to mind too much. He's pretty adaptable. However, he also runs into bullies everywhere he goes. So when he moves in to Coconut Cove, Florida, he's missing Montana, and there's a new bully, of course, named Dana Matherson. Dana's none too smart, however, so Roy doesn't hate him. Uh, he kind of just tries to avoid him. Dana ends up giving him horrible nicknames like Cowgirl and Roy Rogers Eberhardt and even Tex. I don't know about you, but I think Tex is a pretty tough name. Not too much of a, you know, a bully term. However, Roy rolls with it. He loves Montana. He doesn't mind about the cowboys. But Dana is kind of picking on him a lot, so he has to deal with that. However, Roy has other things on his mind than just some dumb bully. One day, from the school bus, he sees this blonde child running and running and running, and he's barefoot. Roy has to get to the bottom of this situation. This child should be in school just like him. He looks like he's about the same age. However, he's running away from the school bus instead of to the school bus. So Roy decides to find out what's what. He follows the kid after school, the running kid. Eventually, he learns that this kid has no name except Mullet Fingers because he can catch Mullet, a fish, with his bare hands. It takes a lot of patience. However, Roy is still confused. Why is this kid not in school? Eventually, he finds out that there are these little owls that burrow in the ground that are on a construction site not too far from where he saw Mullet Fingers. He, Mullet Fingers, and Mullet Fingers' stepsister, who go to school together, they go to school together, Roy and her, they have to do something to save these birds. Will they save them? Will Mullet Fingers get picked up by law enforcement, or even Roy's father? You'll have to read Hoot to find out.